Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this uh, video, we'll talk about the detailed structure of the male code. In the previous video, we discussed about exactly how these uh, male and female cones placed on the plant and the male cone is made up of leaves which are going to produce the microspore. So now when we talk about the male cone or strobilus, these cones they always grow, uh, grow in cluster, grow in clusters and they are at the tip of the long shoot. So at tip of long shoot. This is the location where we are going to find these male cones. If we look at this male cone from outside then we see a little elongated structure and there are these kind of hard woody structures which appear to be present. Now we are going to make all these structures uh, large enough to understand what exactly uh, is there. But before that, if we take a section, a longitudinal section of the male cone, we find that there is a central axis and around this central axis are arranged the microsporophylls. So if this is one microsporophyll, the other one is below it, the next one, and these microsporophylls are spirally arranged around the central axis. So this is how the arrangement is going to be and this is the longitudinal section which we see. So this central part is the axis around which the leaves which are hard woody and this is called the microsporophyll. Now if we enlarge one microsporophyll then we find the tip of the leaf is little pointed and the base becomes little wide and each microsporophyll has two microsporangia that is pollen sac. So one microsporangium is here and the other microsporangium is here. These are the sac like structures in which the pollen grains are present. So this is one microsporangium. That is equivalent to a polar grain. And in this, the pollen would be produced. So, these two microsporangia are visible when we actually see the leaf from the front. If this is the axis, suppose this is the axis we are talking of, the leaf is arranged like this. So, if we turn it like this, then only we are able to see these two microsporangia. So, here, these microsporangia would be visible only from one side. So if we see it like this, we would be able to see only one sac like structure. In this microsporangium are present the microspore mother cell. Microspore mother cell. And this mother cell is a diploid cell. Each microspore mother cell, microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis, reductional division, resulting in formation of microspores. And these microspore producing leaves are called the microsporophylls. And in a cone, many microsporophylls are spirally arranged around this central axis to form this compact structure which is called the cone. And as, as it is having only microsporophyll, producing only microspore, we call this as male cone. Now these microspores which are actually going to change into the polar grains. So once we see a pollen grain formed, each pollen grain has two layers. The inner layer is called the intine. And Outside this in time is present exine. This exine, which is the outer layer, is stretched into these two wing-like structures. 
That means in case of minus, the polar rings are winged. These are winged structures and this two flap like structures which we see, these are the wings and obviously this is going to help the pollen grain in its dispersal. The dispersal or pollination is anemophilus. Anemophilus. Now anemophilus means it is pollinated by wind. Pollination by wind which is known as the anemophilus condition. And these wings help in this wind pollination. Now many a times these pollen grains they germinate while they are still inside the pollen sac or the microsporangium. So we also find a pollen tube which has emerged. So this is germination which has taken place inside the pollen sac itself. Now when these pollen grains are released their number is large. So very large number of pollen are produced and the reason is when the agency is external and a physical agency like wind then you cannot be sure that these pollen grains are going to reach up to the female gamete or not because wind is an agency and if the direction of the wind is wrong then all those pollen grains would be carried somewhere else and so to ensure pollination and fertilization the number of pollen grains is very very large. These pollen grains they are yellow in color and the color is sulfur yellow and as we have said that they are produced in very large number whenever these pollen grains are released in such large numbers above that forest above the pine forest there is a yellow colored cloud which is seen and that is known as sulfur cloud. So sulfur cloud is nothing but a large number of pollen grains of pinus are released. There is no relation with sulfur. It is just the sulfur yellow color which they possess. And the cloud is seen because the number of pollen grains is very, very large. Now these pollen grains are going to reach up to the female cones. So in case of male cones, what we now know is that there are many uh, microsporophylls which are spirally arranged the central axis. Each microsporophyll has two microsporangia that is pollen sac. These pollen sac are completely filled with microspore mother cells which are diploid cells and each one is undergoing meiosis resulting in formation of four microspore. Each mother cell is going to give rise to four microspore. The number has to be large because pollination is by wind and to ensure that it reaches up to the female gamut, the number is large. The structure that helps in this wind pollination are wings which are formed by the extension of enzyme. And many a times when we see these pollen grains which have been released, we find that the in time that there is going to be a tube cell and we find that the pollen tube has already formed. That means the pollens, they germinate while they are still inside the microsporangia or the pollen sac. Now when it is taken by wind, it is going to reach up to the female cone. Now in the next part, we will understand the detailed structure of the female.